Microphone, we look too loud. Check we're good over here. Yeah, I think we're good. Mic looks good. Camera's looking good. Two seconds, kids. Let me just grab a couple bottles. Watching, you would know that we used to do Hack Chef shows from the kitchen quite often, all throughout quarantine. Then the studio was relocated to the, um, to the, uh, a different studio. And, uh, you know, I brought it back up here. Because I was talking to some people before, and they were saying that, um, they were saying they wanted to know a little bit about the cooking. So, uh, you know, I was talking to a new group of people, um, that I, uh, was chatting with, uh, via Reddit. The, uh, Bumblebee Humble Kids. Holla holla. Uh, we were talking about steaks, we were talking about cooking holiday roasts. And, um, I was giving some tips and I said, fuck it. I was going to stream tonight and, uh, my day just got cut a little short. So I said, fuck it. Let's fire it up in here. So we're back. Change things around. We'll see how the audio is, see how the video is. And, uh, we'll take it from there. But it's looking good over here. I got my screen over here. So if you see me continually looking over here, that's why. Um, but first things first. I want to, um, why is this so far down here? Most Hack Chef shows always start with uh, a cocktail. It's very important to have a cocktail uh, while you're cooking. And uh, I got a couple things going. So on the stove, I mean, we'll get to it. I'll show you what's on the stove. Can I, let's see if everything looks good now. Yeah, all right. So over here on the stove, we have, you'll see right now, we got some tomato sauce and another pot going. Um, let's get that out of there. Yeah, that's an obnoxious camera angle. So what's going on over there is the, um, a tomato sauce and a bolognese that I actually made last night. That's really gelatinous and really nice. Um, room temperature on both. What's up? What's up? Just talk about what I got going on here. Um, I got some stuff to make lasagna. That was my plan. Uh, I'll talk you through my lasagna method and my... Lasagna business, uh, and then I got this beautiful big roast after I was talking to y'all today. I went to the store and picked this bad boy up. Peek this sucker. Look at that! This is a one bone roast. It's just been hanging out today. I think a one bone. One fat bone. I was talking to the Bumblebee Humble Kids. Telling them I was going to show them how to brown butter up a steak. And uh, this will be considered my holiday roast. So I'm going to rock this thing tonight. We're going to cook this thing in brown butter. It's going to be beautiful. I'm going to assemble a lasagna, but first things first, we got to make a cocktail. So while we're here with this angle, we might as well fucking get going. I got a little bit of wine over there, but before, I'd just like to get a cocktail going. All right, if you don't want to watch me make a cocktail, leave and come back. It's fine. Um, but if you do, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to make a classic martini. I'm feeling martini right now. You know, usually I'd sip on some wine, but I'm going to sip on some wine. But, I'm, you know, it's the holiday spirit. Let's get into it. Let's make a little martini. Let's do it the right way. I got Ford's gin right here. Oh, I forgot this camera's up. Ford's gin. Big fan of the Ford's gin. Hopefully I sound good. Hopefully I'm not too loud. I'm trying to not yell and blow my voice out. I'm trying to get reused to uh, the stream setup here. Let me know if there's any audio issues, the music's too loud or I'm too loud or whatever. I got some Nolly Pratt Extra Drive Vermouth, very important for your martini. And what I like about martini is a little bit of orange bitters. So I'm going to do a baby martini, um, and then we're going to take it from there. Because it's a long night. I got to make a lasagna, I'm going to make the roast. I got a potato in the oven so I can eat some with the beefs. So uh, when I make a martini... Uh, where the hell can I do this? Here we go. I go two and a half ounces for a reasonable, you know, start your night martini. We're going to go two and a half ounces of gin. I like my martinis stirred. This might be better. Ooh, that gin. Woo! This was a like London up in this bitch. All right. I go two and a half on the gin. I should look up here. I'm not used to the camera being in my kitchen. Two and a half on the gin, and then I go half on the vermouth. So I got three ounces of liquid in there. 
It's a small little martini. It's a baby martini. It's a, it's a let's start the evening martini. Other important essentials that go into this. I like... What up, y'all? Tortuga Furioso! I like a hit or two of orange bitters in my clean, non-dirty, non-olived martinis. We're gonna need some ice in this. I like to go a mix of uh, crushed end cubes. I think it's a good way to chill everything down. I don't think you can see me, but deal with it. So, I, you know, I call this that the hack chef, um, the hack chef, uh, holiday special. So, you know, you gotta have a cocktail at the holidays. Another important part of this is getting some ice in your in your serving vessel, your cup, your glass, and chilling it down. You don't want your drink. You don't want to make a nice martini. Spend your time making a nice martini and not have a cold beverage. So put some ice in the cup. I heard Jim Martini was happening. You right, Red, Red, Red returning. You right. So. My martini spec, I got two and a half ounces for gin, half ounce, not only Pratt extra dry vermouth, a couple shakes of orange bitters, which I feel is my secret weapon in this clean ass martini. And then the other secret ingredient is keeping your glass cold. Make sure your glass is cold. Thank you for the follow, G Jamming. Vodka and extra dirty for me, please. What's up, what's up? So we're keeping this very cold, glass is very cold, and we got, like I said, two kinds of ice in here. If you got the ability, Big cubes of ice, and then smash up some ice cubes. Very important to have both. And then I like it stirred. Because if you shake it, I think you add too much air. It gets really cloudy. And that's not what I'm looking for. What's up? Cheers, everybody. Thanks for joining. So like I said, I'm looking over here in the screen. I should have a screen here. It'll probably be a little bit more friendly. I got a big-ass roast over there. We're going to brown butter roast. And I got some lasagna makings. I got to make a bechamel sauce. We're going to layer the lasagna. We're gonna put the steak on first and then I'll start layering the lasagna. Hopefully we can get it all done in a reasonable amount of time. If not, you know, it's all right. So you wanna you want to shake this until the glass or your uh, stirring vessel, you, you don't have to use a glass, you could use whatever, is icy cold on the outside. When you feel the outside is cold, you're good to go. All right, pull that shit off. Take your cold, your coldy cold glass, dump that shit out. You can tell the glass is frosty now. That's what we wanna see. All right, and I like to do a double strain because I like it nice and nice and uh, clear. That's what I like. Now you can't see me doing. It. Maybe maybe like over here. Is this like? Uh, it's weird. Well, up is down and left is right. Here we go. Yeah. Shake it out. Look at that. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so that's how we start, you know, any kind of, any kind of respectable cooking operation. You know, you should be starting with uh, a cocktail. And in this case, uh, if I had a citrus zest in there, I think I do. I think I got a couple oranges, actually. Ho oh, oh! ho! Tis the season. So, like I said, I put orange bitters in here, so I'm going to pull off a nice big old... One of them bad boys. Zest that bitch right on top. Boom, baby. All right. Cheers to y'all. Thanks for joining. Let's get this party started. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. The orange in the martini is really something that's uh, underused, I think. I'm a big, big fan. Hit of the orange bitters and the orange zest at the end. Lemon's great. Olives are great. 30's great. But I'm telling you, there's something about that. Something about it, baby. I love it. Oh, that's nice. Also, make sure you hydrate. All right, let's get that out of the frame. And let's get to work. So, like I said, some people I was talking to had some questions about... Thank you. Cabinets are um, old and moldy, but they are painted green and they're nice. Um... Some people have questions about big holiday roasts on Instagram and on the discords and all this. So I said, fuck it. 
my day was cut short today, and I said, let's get the streaming. So I got myself a one bone big boy holiday roast. Look at this sucker. Nope, not you. Nope, not you. I need a button thing. Look at that bad boy. Talk about almost two inches thick. Nice, nice marbling in here is essentially a massive bone in ribeye steak. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's a girthy boy. We're going to get up on that. All right, so we're going to talk about this. I'm going to get into this. We're going to season this. I'm going to tell you kind of what I would do with this. And, uh, and we're going to get cooking on the stove. But first, um, let me talk to you about what I have on the stove and what we have to get going uh, over there. So, I have a simple red sauce here that I made earlier today, um, this morning actually. Clean, nothing to it. Um, and over here last night, I made a ragu bolognese. So this is um, uh, beef, pork, veal, cooked down with onions, carrots, celery for hours and hours and hours. And um, you can see how gelatinous it is. It doesn't even want to move. That's perfect. So what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to layer it with some fresh pasta sheets and a bechamel sauce and cheese in this bad boy. And it's going to be a uh, Christmas celebration. So what I'm thinking is I want to bring this to like, um, I'm going to bring this to my uh, family for Christmas. And then kind of like, hopefully, I've never made it this way. But my plan is to use this big ass pan. Look how deep that pan is. And get, you know, fill it up and then chill it overnight. I'm not going to cook it tonight. And then be able to slice out layers of it and kind of have big planks of lasagna. That's my goal. So I'm going to try my method a little bit differently with the lasagna tonight. But that does include making a bechamel sauce, which we're going to need butter, flour, and all that goodness for. So I'm trying to think. The steak, I say we make the bechamel. Let's make the bechamel sauce on the stove. That'll go fairly quickly. And then uh, the steak won't take that long. Now, the steak shouldn't take that long. Uh, I like it a little on the rare side. But let's, uh, fuck it. Let's just go with it. So let's get the bechamel going. All right, I got a pan here. Bechamel sauce. Hopefully you can hear me while I'm talking over here. It looks like you can. Um, I need a remote thing. Here we go. So uh, the bechamel sauce is going to be, I guess I'll do it over here so you can see it. The bechamel sauce is going to be, um, is going to be uh, butter, flour, and milk. And then a little bit of nutmeg. Let me get the nutmeg out now before I forget. And then maybe I'll add cheese to it. So I don't know about you. Why don't you tell me, when you get lasagna, I don't know where all you're all from. My lasagna, my, you know, my mother's lasagna she would make would be sheets of like the Ronzoni kind of, um, you know, crinkly lasagna sheets that were like barely cooked maybe. Layers of her meat sauce that had just like big chunks of meat in it. And then she would do layers of ricotta cheese that had egg whipped inside of it. Now, you know, as, I, as delicious as a kid... But as I say, hey, thanks for the follow. Hell yeah, fanfic. I'm from Jersey. Jersey, Jersey up in here. Sorry, I'm missing your chat. I'm trying to chat. Stop, stop. Um, so, you know, layers of ricotta cheese. Hey, thanks for the follow. Uh, layers of ricotta cheese with the meat sauce and the tomatoes and the noodles. And, you know, sometimes it's really soupy. You know, she, she's a great cook. She is a great cook. Um... But I think, I, you know, after I learned a little bit more about lasagna and food, I want to take, I take her, you know, the flavors of what she would make and how she'd make them. And then I try to improve upon them. That's my goal. So that's going to be part of the Christmas gift. I'm going to make a nice big ass plank of lasagna so she doesn't have to cook and bring that shit over. Nutmeg, very important for our bechamel. So let's get this pan going over here. Sorry, I got to keep going over here and in the button. So we're going to make a bechamel sauce, which I think I did once or twice to uh, to uh, add to my lasagna. Not necessarily the biggest fan of it, but it's very, very traditional in that sense. So, um, I, you know, we're gonna go for it. I'm gonna try it again. I, I feel like I'm gonna, I wanna mount it with a little bit of butter this time. Um, I bought milk today and everything. 
A Brit here. If you can explain American bacon to me. Well, American bacon... Um, we use pork belly in American bacon. We take a pork belly, cure it, and then... Um, it gets smoked. So it's a smoked, cured product. Uh, American pork belly. American bacon. Now that's American bacon, not Canadian bacon, which is pork loin, which is a completely different thing. Delicious nonetheless. So I'm just measuring out three cups of milk for the bechamel. I'm guessing I need three cups. And I'm gonna do, bechamel is very simple from what I remember. Again, I haven't made a bechamel in a minute, but um, hey, what's up guy? What's up Twin Light? Bechamel sauce, we're talking, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm no expert here, but bechamel sauce is pretty much flour uh, cooked in butter, you know, like a roux, very light. We don't want a lot of color on it because we want to keep it white. And then slowly add a whisk in the milk and then boom, you got bechamel sauce. That's what I remember and that's what I'm going to do. Um, right here in this pan. So the pan's hot. So let's get some butter in there. You know, I don't even know what three teaspoons looks like, but I don't really measure. I'm going to call that two. Eh, let's, let's call it three. Sure. All right, so now I use different kinds of butter for different things. I'm using like okay butter for this. Sounds right to me. Nice. Yeah, we use back. Back bacon? Where are you from, BK? Back bacon. It's called pea meal bacon. Is that a UK thing? Is that a Brit thing? Or is that a Canadian thing? The pea meal bacon. I know they roll it in cornmeal and all that shit. So we want this butter to melt, and then we're going to add flour. So I'm going to guess that that's like three, four tablespoons of, um, not sure what kind of flour this is, but I'm going to hope it's a uh, standard issue AP. How many tablespoons is in a quarter cup? I want to say four. Oh, I got a tablespoon right here. Look at this. Beautiful. So we'll just add three or four. We'll put four in here and then we'll go, we'll add accordingly. So the one thing I remember from making bechamel is that you don't want, um, you don't want to color it like a roux because essentially what we're doing is making like a New Orleans style roux, right? We're adding flour to butter and cooking it out, but we don't want to get it deep in color. You know, we don't want to get it rich like that. Um, this isn't my ideal burner for this, but since I have a layout where you can't really see this burner, we're gonna fucking go with it. So bear with me if we scorch it. Um, so just back slice and smoked, too much fat on belly. Well, what's good about um, bacon is that it's like a tool. It's kind of like this this roast that I'm gonna do here, this, this, this big old bad boy. Um, What's nice about this is, this is super fatty. I mean, that's not a lean cut by any means, right? I mean, look at this big knot of fat here. And then even on the side, I mean, we got big big old hunks of fat here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rip a piece of this off and I'm gonna render it down and then cook in it. So, you know, yeah, you're, you know, there's intermuscular fat that you're gonna eat and maybe it's too fat, you know, but in reality, if you use it to your advantage, it's a good thing. If you're making breakfast with American fatty ass bacon, you could render all that bacon fat out, cook your eggs in it, and it's super delicious. You tell me you don't cook your eggs in bacon fat? What are you doing? All right, so this butter, you know, we've melted down. Hopefully you can see it. Is that like too bright? I'm trying to like. Is that like, there we go. You can see it. Whatever. You can see. Alright, so let's get in there with like one, two, three. And let's whisk that bitch up. Alright, we're gonna need some more than that. I think we're gonna need some more than that even. Got a little scooper. Ever hurt my body? You want it to get kind of like solid. This is a lot of goddamn 
I put a lot of goddamn butter in there. There we go. You want it to clump up like that. You want to see it clump up. And then you want to keep the heat really low, because again, we're not trying to get color on this. And you want to cook out the flour. You can almost smell it when it happens. It takes a little bit, but you can smell the flour cook out. And again, we don't want color. We don't want to get it like super, um, super rude up. There we go. That's kind of the texture. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to turn around and read the chat. You can tell me in chat that this looks okay. That would be good. All right, so we're just going to keep that on low heat. Let that go. Does that look good? Yeah, I guess you can see that. It's hard for me. I see the preview screen, but, like, I can't. I don't see the stream. So I don't know. Like, it looks okay to me. I don't know if it's good. Tell me. I could fix some shit on the fly. Not angles, really, but... Anyway. Um... So we want to cook this till, till, till the flour cooks out, and then you, and then we're just gonna slowly whisk in our um, milk and make the bechamel, and then we're just gonna layer. So the other thing, while that cooks, I'm gonna be honest. To be honest with you, I have some leftover, fresh, fucking, fresh pasta sheets that I don't remember when they're from or what, but they were in my freezer and this is what made me think, you know, let me make lasagna and get rid of this shit. Uh, I think these were bought at Restaurant Depot. So I defrosted them. I haven't even looked at them yet, but I'm assuming that they're good. Taste a little piece. Yeah, I mean, it's all right. So, you know, I could make I could make pasta, but today's not the day. We're not making pasta today. No, that's not what we're doing. We're going to play with these sheets. So let's see if these fall apart. This might be a complete disaster. Hopefully these sheets are good. I don't really remember what the hell these are even for. This looks like it's got some freezer burn on it, this one. So let's put that one aside. This is, let's see how many sheets we got. These have been in my freezer forever. You know, they're already made. There's nothing really in them. They come frozen. It's a good product for food service. You know, if you gotta bust out a bunch of shit and you don't have a, someone making your pasta, it's uh, it's helpful. All right, so these are looking good. Better than, I was hoping I was hoping it wasn't a disaster. So far, so good. Maybe we should stagger these a little bit. Keep an eye on my, uh, on my roof for me, will you? I'm gonna do this with these, so we know how many we got. So, like I said, I'm trying to go with like a big, nice, thick-ass lasagna in that pan. Usually I would do a couple small ones, but I'm hoping to be able to make one big one and then slice off pieces. Because, again, that ragu, if you can't see it, this ragu that I made yesterday, which is room temperature, is like solid. Like, I mean... This shit's like solid. It's not pouring out. You know what I mean? It's very, very gelatinous. Ooh. And we're almost there on this. That is almost there. Maybe we'll even lower this a little bit more if I can. Uh, so that ragu is super gelatinous. And we're going to layer that. And what I'm hoping is it'll set and be gelatinous, and then um, it'll be in good shape for slicing and then baking off accordingly. Because everything is cooked sans the pasta, it's fresh pasta, so this shouldn't take too long. So again, you guys got any questions about anything food related or anything like that, I can help you out, let me know. I know some of you guys said you were making a big holiday roast, you know, um, um, I'm here to help. We're going to do that roast that I have, which is a smaller version, you know, you could, it, but no matter, the same method I'm using, you could use on a massive ass steak. This is not panettone. I cannot make panettone. I mean, I'm sure I could, but that sounds like a lot of work. We're doing lasagna. 
We're doing a big old steak, boy. We're doing martinis. All right, we got a lot of nice... Well, you know, I haven't eaten this yet, but... This isn't better for, I expected half of these to be ripped up in pieces of shit, so... All right, cool. And then these two look like shit, so we'll keep these aside. Hopefully we don't need them. All right, nice. Those look like garbage. And then I bought a little bit of extra pasta in case we need it. Hopefully we don't, but... Let's... Fuck it. Let's take a look at it. See if it's any good. Yeah, grabbing a knife. Just in case. I bought a couple fresh pasta sheets just as backup. These feel identical to that. Hard, crunchy. Kind of weird. My dog is sleeping. And kicking his leg. What are we looking at? That's garbage. No, we're doing great here. All right, so the bechamel, you can tell the flour's cooked off. We're not getting color, this is looking good. We're just starting to color, which means it's time to start adding some milk. All right, so let's keep it low. Where's that milk? All right, so I got about three cups of milk here. I'm probably gonna end up needing four, but let's, let's go in with a little bit. A little bit at a time. A little bit and incorporate, a little bit and incorporate, and this is how you, you keep it from being lumpy. Take it off the heat if you need. There we go. The pan's got a lot of heat in it, so you don't need to you don't need to continually you don't need to keep your pans on the heat, you know, you can keep moving. Like, if it gets too hot while it's on the heat, just pull that shit off. Alright, it's looking nice. A bechamel! Oh, there goes milk everywhere. Ah, the smell of burnt milk on my stove top. That's what I love. Alright. So once this bechamel's done, we can get the steak going, and then we'll assemble the lasagna while the steak cooks. Alright, so bechamel first, keep it warm. And then we'll take it from there. Damn. Made a lot of roux up in here. Oh, there we go. Nice. All right, so let's get this back on heat. Back and forth. Back and forth. This is going to be a thick-ass bechamel. We're going to need a little bit more milk than anticipated. I picked three cups. Might need four. It's all right. I mean, we're making a big-ass lasagna. All right, so this is looking good. We got no lumps so far. I mean, any self-respecting goomba right now is doing, um, doing, uh, Feast of the Seven Fishes. Oh, yeah, the, the, uh, the pasta sheets. So, I'm not making pasta. I mean, I only have so much fucking time in my day. Making pasta is pretty easy. That's a whole other episode. It's not very hard to do, but I'm trying to clear my freezer. So I took out a quart of some bolognese that I had last night, braised it out with some meat that I had and some extra tomato sauce that I had. This tomato sauce I had in the freezer. I had those lasagna sheets in the freezer. So, you know, put it all together and it's a lasagna party. You know, that I'm trying to clear out my freezer for the season. All right. This is looking nice. That's tasted real good. No lumps in there. I, I don't know if it's going to need the other milk. I mean, I'll add a little bit more. But this is in a nice space right now. I like where that's at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this milky ragu. I'm going to move this red sauce. And I'm going to put this over here on a low flame. Because we're going to start the, um, the steak. It's going to get cooked over here. So let's keep that here for now. Let's get this... Let's get this pasta out of here. Let's add a little bit more milk. Let's do one more cup. I'd say that was about four cups of, uh, I mean, four tablespoons. I feel like in bechamel world, I'm going to add some cheese to that anyway, so fuck it. I don't care if it's a little thin. I feel like in bechamel world, you're supposed to go one ratio. I like to work in ratios. I think it's like one tablespoon flour, one tablespoon butter, 
You know, and that's kind of like how it's supposed to be. I don't know if that's true. It's kind of what I remember. I haven't made fucking bechamel and sauces like that in quite some time, but... Shoot from the hip. You're gonna be fine. You're making a milk gravy, and we're gonna add some cheese to it. So, it's looking nice now. It's, um... Let me get a spoon so you can kind of see the thickness. You know, you can see it coats the spoon real nice. Which is kind of what we're looking for. And since I'm going to add cheese to this, this might be a little thinner than it was, but I think that's okay. So I'm just going to cook this down a little bit, and then we're going to add some cheese to thicken it, and it's going to be real nice. Let's taste it. Yeah, like that's too thin now. I shouldn't have added that last one, but whatever. We're going to cook it down. It's going to be fine. We're going to add a bunch of cheese, Parmigiano, uh, and also... One more thing before we get to the steak. So I have... Um, some ricotta cheese that I have to use. It's a little past its prime. It's a little watery. But we gotta use it. So, I'm gonna do... We're gonna layer this in with the, um... Lasagna in a very American-style way. Yeah, maybe we just add this. Well, we should have added this to the... This should have been the last addition to the bechamel. We should have just added this. Fuck the milk. That was stupid. That would have been nice. Well, here we are. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer this like my mother would, where she would add uh, egg, egg, and like bad Italian spices to the ricotta cheese. I feel like I have a jar of bad Italian spices. Yeah, like the herbs of Italy fucking vibe, like this shit. The polios in the mozzarella. She would always use this, so I'm going to put some of it in there. Not too much, just a little bit as a... A sign of respect. The other thing she would do is also add an egg. Eggs are very important to bind that shit together. And then the other thing I remember, if I have it, and I do, is she would use uh, dried parsley in there. Um, I will not be using dried parsley in there. I'll just put some fresh parsley because I have it. So a nice color pop. Nice little pop of color up in there. Let's check on this bechamel. See, this is too thin now. I added too much fucking milk. The cheese will thicken it up though. Now we have to add cheese to that, but that's okay. We'll just let that warm and reduce a little bit, and then right before we use it, we'll melt in the cheese, and that'll get nice and thick. So we're gonna make that like a Parmigiano cheese sauce. I got a nice batch of grated parm in there. It'll be real nice. My dog is here trying to get up on this parsley. Chill out, bro. All right, so we're gonna add this parsley up in here. So that's kind of like, this is like a nod to like my mother's lasagna. She would always have the ricotta. But I guess in like, if you were in Italy, you wouldn't use ricotta cheese. I don't fucking know. Ricotta is a little watery, you know, and, and and especially in the method I'm trying to do here, we don't want that, but we're doing it. So you can see what this looks like here. We got raw egg. You know what else she would add to this? And I have it, so we might as well do it. Granulated garlic. She would love to add this. Uh, I think I have some of the magic thickener, but I'm going to add cheese to that. And I think that'll be fine. After it gets a little bit of heat and cheese, it's not that thin. I think the cheese is going to thicken that up real nice. It's going to bring it right where it needs to be. So this is like Americanized as fuck, this ricotta cheese mix. It's really wet. I mean, you can see how wet it is. You know, I'm going to do maybe one layer of this. I was going to mix this in with the bechamel. But now I think in the middle, I'm going to do one layer of ricotta cheese. Because it seems like, it feels like there's enough of that. That needs a little salt and pepper, and that'll be good to go. Put a little bit of fine salt in there. A little bit of pep. And then we good. All right. So now, you know, you want to be ready for all of the shit that we're doing here. So, you know, we got this layer. One of the layers is going to be ricotta cheese. Boom. Ricotta cheese is done. We got that layer. We need the layer of the... the um, Ragu bolognese. We got it. We need, I like just 
bare red tomato sauce to be at the ready also because you know when you layer when you layer the bolognese to me is like is pure meat you don't want just bolognese sometimes you want a little bit of red sauce on the bottom and on the top so that's good the ricotta cheese is good to go we're gonna put some nutmeg might as well put a little nutmeg in the um, bechamel now before we forget. Whoop. Like that. Now we gotta find the nutmeg. Now you play find the large nutmeg that you dropped because you picked the small one like an idiot. This is always fun. Oh, you know what? It can stay in there, I guess. Because we ruined it! It's alright. It's just a huge piece of nothing. It needs to be graded to be, like, useful. Alright, just a bit of nutmeg in there. I'm sure I have the... Uh... Found ya. Okay. So, let's keep this going. Just give it a good scraping so nothing sticks on the bottom. And then we're gonna add the cheese to this right before we use it. This is the only hot thing, really, that we're adding to the lasagna. Um, so I wanna thicken that up with the cheese when we do it. But we'll hold off on that, because that's not gonna take long. Um, let me just get the cheese out so it's ready and I don't forget it. Cheese, the cheese, and uh, yeah, all right. So the cheeses are ready. We're gonna do that. We're gonna layer the lasagna. Fucking cool, bro. Let's clean our board a little bit, and let's reset and think where we are. Okay, so we have all the components going for our lasagna. Uh, the bechamel sauce is looking real nice. Um, we're gonna add some cheese to that and move on. The uh, ragu was done, like I said, you know, that's done, and then that. So we're gonna start layering all that. But first, I think it's time we get to the steak. Let's talk about beef, baby. Let's talk about the boeuf. Let's talk about the coat de boeuf. Maybe we wanna go this way. Let's talk about this bad boy beef, all right? This bad boy, I'm gonna say he's about two pounds, two pounds plus. Been hanging out at room temp. Now, if you have a roast, I won't talk about this kind of shit, right? I like cooking. If you know something about me, if you know something about me, oh, look at all these subscriptions. Thank you, guys. Um, you know your boy likes some beef. And I like me some steak. And I've been eating it for some time. And I got them secrets. So what you want is you want dry steak, number one, okay? So if you get this steak and you're gonna cook this on say Friday or something like that, okay? You can just let this thing hang out in your fridge like that, ideally on a rack. Like get, if you have a pan, you know, you get a little rack in there so it's raised because you want the air to circulate underneath it, you know? The idea is y you want, you know, when you go to like Peter Luger's or, or one of these high-end steakhouses, they dry age their beef, okay? Now what that means is they have rooms that are conditioned... Language, bud. Chill. They have rooms that are like conditioned and ready to go with the proper humidity and like salinity and shit in the air and the right bacteria in the air that is going to make a massive slab of beef. Now they have, this is the slab that we get, right? That we're gonna cook, but they, they get the whole fucking quarters. Like they get massive slabs of beef and then they let them rest for, you know, 30 plus days, dry aged beef. This, bruh, you wanna go out? Excuse me while I let my dog out. You wanna go out, bud? Go ahead. Go for it. All right, so, anyway, you know, you can kind of fake dry age at home. You get yourself this big ass steak or whatever steak you got, and then you put it on a rack like this, like I said, and then, you know, you just put this in your fridge like that, uncovered, just like that. Don't be scared. The beef is the beef. This is how it lives in the butcher case. 
And once it's raised up under the pan, the air is going to circulate under it. You know, the key is having the air circulate underneath it also. Because you don't want it to, um, you don't want, uh, sorry, forgot to serve base. Shamala. You, you want the air to get all around it. If you just let it sit on a plate, the moisture is going to sit in there and then you're kind of doing the opposite. It's going to sit in a pool of its own juice. What it's going to do is while it sits there, it's going to give off its juice and the air that just naturally circulates around the fridge is going to dry it out. So this steak I had in there for only a couple hours and it's pretty dry to the touch. That's what you want. That's what you're looking for. Because that's going to give you... That's going to give you... When you can touch a steak and it's dry like that, that's going to give you a really nice crust. And you even want to get in there and dry it even more if you can. You want this shit to be as dry as possible when you go in and cook it. There's a lot of ways you could cook a steak like this. And also, you know, you could get a bigger roast than this. You could have a double, three, three times the size. You could cook it the same way I'm about to cook this. It'll just take a little bit longer. You could sit and pull your own juice. It's cool. So, you know, this is a really nice... Prime rib roast, one rib. You know, they were selling them at the store for, um, you know, as rib roasts. You know, big five, six hitters. But I just told them, cut me off a big two-inch slab, and this is what I got. It's nice. So my dog's going to be happy with the bone that's in here, because he's going to eat that. And then this thing's probably going to feed me for two, three days, for Christ's sakes. I mean, could I eat all that? Probably. I'm not even that hungry, but I said I was going to do, you know, a cook stream. So we're going to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this. I'm going to look at this big old hunk that's right here on the end. You can see how this fat looks different than this fat. And you can feel it. This fat's soft. This fat's going to render out when we cook it. And we're going to make that delicious. This fat is part of the cap fat. All right. Now, you, you could cook that and eat it. But it's going to continue to be chewy. It's going to have a chew to it. It's just generally going to be unpleasant unless you really treat it right. If I treat it right, I mean, the best thing for what I would do with this and what I'm going to do with this is cut it off. You know, let the meat do the work for you. Just pull it up. Slice this big old hunk off. And you'll know what I mean. Like, you might not have any of this in your steak. You get a really nice piece. You might not have a piece like that. Yeah, it was protecting this little piece of meat, but whatever. I could take care of that. This is, like, hard. You know, it's like, it's kind of hard for me to, like, explain to you the difference of this. But what I'm going to do with this is put it right where it belongs because this is just a big hunk of fat. Now, yeah, I want to eat this, but the move with this is to put it right in your pan, your cold pan before you even preheat it because as you preheat your pan, that's going to render off the fat, all right? And then we're going to be cooking in its own beef fat. So don't waste those scraps, all right? So use those big fat scraps for that. Yeah, you could use, you could use this, but this is also going to protect the meat and this is soft and we're going to eat that later. So really, if you want to get like fancy, you could like put some incisions on this fat right here. So it gives off a little fat and looks real pretty when you're done with it. You know, you don't want to go deep. You just want to slide your knife on it. Very unnecessary. I don't think I've ever done that, but that's it. Love that deckel. Yeah, so and so the deckel is a part of the, of the, the, the ribeye. So the ribeye's got, I don't know what the fuck you call the parts, but I do know this part up here is called the deckel. This, this band that goes here. And then this part here is, I don't know, the heart or the eye. And then this is, you know, fucking bone nubbins, we'll call it. But that's your ribeye. Not even my favorite cut of meat, to be honest with you. But this is a nice one. And this is going to cook up real good. It's going to be delicious. So, um, the first thing we want to do is get our pan ready to go. And then I think we, um, this is where it starts to get fun. Because I'm going to be multi, I can usually multitask easily without having a camera and a stream going. But... Fun when you're doing live. Do it live. Fuck it. We'll do it live. All right. So let's check our bechamel. It's looking real nice and thick right now, actually. Even without that cheese addition. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's beautiful. This came together so much better. I might not even want to add cheese now. All right. So I'm turning that off. This is looking real nice. Can you see that? Can you see how nice that looks on my spoon? Look at that. No lumps. Try it. All right, so we're gonna add some cheese to that. That's real nice texture though. All right, so the secret to this method that I like to use is great high quality butter. 
all right? You gotta use the best butter you can find. It's very important. Um, the butter is really important. So you're cooking this steak. You could cook it on a grill. You could do a reverse sear on a big steak. You got a steak like this, it's three times the size. You know, you can sous vide the fucking thing. You can do, there's a million ways to do it. But the brown butter cooking is gonna give it the, the best crust hands down. A very important thing is to use the best butter you can because the butter is the thing that's gonna be adding the flavor. If you just use like basic bitch store, brought, store bought brand unsalted butter, you're not going to be getting that like concentrated dairy flavor. It's going to work. You're going to have a beautiful crust, but like you're not going to really be doing yourself justice. Spend the extra couple bucks on this is where the good butter should come in. So I have some really high quality butter here um, that I'm going to get ready to cook in. I'm just going to loosen it up in here because this is from some fucking weird sketchy place that delivers it to my house from a fucking raw milk farm real sketchy and shady but i have it and i literally use it just for methods like this so that said uh i'm gonna take this pan which is big enough to hold our steak right like big enough to hold the steak there and i'm gonna put it on low i'm gonna put it on pretty much as low as it can go and then i'm just gonna render out this beef fat and once it starts sizzling and crisping up then we're gonna add the butter to it, and then once the butter browns, then we'll add the steak to it. All right, so that being said, the butter's getting ready over here. Our steak is getting ready. We're gonna season the steak accordingly once the steak, once steak time comes. I like seasoning it literally right before it hits the, the, hits the heat. Um, and yeah, I like to cook my steak like on the rarer side also. Um, you know, I like to cook mine off at like I'll like pull mine at like one when it's between one and one ten, and then I'll let it rest. That's kind of how I like it. But you do you, dog. The method's the same. All right, so let's get into this. Let's fuck this shit up in a good way. Let's get all the ingredients over here. Start layer of lasagna. Oh. Um. You can't really see this, but I guess it's okay. <coughs> So uh, we'll do this right here. Okay. I'm trying to make it so we can see everything. And then we need the sauce sauce here for at least one layer. All right, nice, nice. Um, this is a big ass, this is a big ass pan. Um, so I'm going to spray this down with uh, some kind of like non-stick business. Only because I have it, otherwise I'd like parchment it or something. But I have some non-stick business, and that's what we're going to do. Because I want it to not stick. So I will aggressively spray the non-stick. And uh... Non-stick spray. Uh, and then I think we can get into it. Um, I'm going to take these noodles and put them over here because I'm going to need that more than this. Let's put the ragu here. There we go. So, you know, like any good Italian boy, the first thing you put in the bottom of your pan is red sauce. Now, if I didn't have a spare red sauce and I just had ragu, this would all be meat and chunky. That's not what I want. It's not what I want. I want red sauce. I want clean, pure red sauce. So again, we got this pan, we got the pan on the stove, by the way. We're gonna have to go to three cam. Send nudes. Mm. So we're gonna, um, let's add some cheese to this. Let's do some like, um, I have some pecorino here. We're gonna add straight pecorino in there. I also have some parmigiano, 24 month parmigiano reggiano. I'm gonna whisk that right in the bechamel and then we're gonna bring that right over. And that's gonna be that. This is a nice cheesy bechamel. I'm sure some Napolitans will say that this is fucking blasphemy or whatever, I don't give a fuck. Don't fucking at me, bro. The sauce needed a little salt, the cheese is gonna do that. I'm going to turn this stove up a little bit. 
so that beef can start going. This is looking nice. Let's taste it. Oh yeah, that's fucking delightful. All right, the bechamel is ready. And another ladle for the bechamel. And a little spoon for that would be helpful. All right, so now we're layering lasagna, bitches. So you want the sauce to get in the corners all the way through. It's a big ass pan. This is a lot of goddamn lasagna. So again, my goal here, every lasagna should have a goal. That's how I feel. My goal here is to finish my beverage. But my goal here is to layer the lasagna such so that you can see how thick it is. So that I can cut off layers of it tomorrow once it all congeals and, and on itself. That's the idea. I want to be able to like cut off planks of lasagna. Ideally three of them. Um, and then, you know, serve them at will. Cheers to everybody. Thank you for joining. Look at all these people in those chats popping off. Slather the steak in butter oil. Hell yeah, we're going to do that. That's exactly what's going to happen. Usually I have some like beef tallow that I would cook it in, but my last steak cook, I used all the beef tallow. So that's not happening tonight. Um, so again, we're just gonna render all the beef fat that we can off of this piece that we've ripped off the steak, bonus piece. But uh, let's keep, let's get layering on this. Let's see how this, let's see how this lasagna shapes up. So let's look at this weird fucking, how's this, this, this is not a bad shape. It's almost like two pieces here. Cocktails and martini, sir. I'm drinking a nice martini. So I'm just going to go in with the first layer here. I like that, how that fits. And then we're going to go in with the second layer. I don't really want overlap, but if we have to have it, we have to have it. This is the secondary shitty pasta. Let's, let's save that. Let's keep it together. I could cut it. Let's see how the overlap is. It's only like... The overlap's only like... That much. Do we keep the overlap or do we cut that off? What do you think? Yeah, fuck it. Let's just keep it. Maybe it'll give it some more structure. Okay, so that's nice, right? I like that. I need a, uh... I need some kind of, uh, vessel for the, uh... So, I don't know. So, here's the thing. Like, I usually don't do bechamel and layers of, like that. So, should I put the base? Should I do the meat layer? I think we gotta have a meat layer here, right? Like, look at this fucking sauce. This is just fucking meat ragu, baby. And if you, you know, you could just eat this with pasta. But this is, this is so good. I can't tell you how good this is. So hopefully I have enough. I'm going to put a nice layer. A nice thin layer. I don't want it too much. Oh, look, a huge hunk of Parmigiano. Mmm. Snacks for your boy. Fast rendering. I like that. All right, so let's, no, we're going to need more than that. Again, I want a thin layer here. I don't want thick ass. Woo! Sorry, I don't want thick ass layers. Oh, another Parmesan rind. Hmm. Also delicious. All right, so we need three scoops here. The three scoop kind of kind of deal. So, questions? Oh, yeah. We can see. Hold on. Let's fucking do this. Boom, bitch. 843 Rebel TV. 843 Rebel TV. You can try and call in, and we can see if it works. I've never done it up here, I don't think, but we'll see. So, this is looking nice. So, that's like a thin layer of meat, which is kind of what I want. You know, I don't want it to be super thick, because we're, go, we're going for layers, not... Not um, not not overkill. So let's go with the let's bring the bechamel in now. Let's do a bechamel like hit like like a like a 
like a flyover of just bechamel. Because this is parmigiano, pecorino, little little crema. That's like a nice layer. I like that. Like a simple layer like that is what I'm talking about. And now we're just going to keep doing that. So let's see, before we commit, how many times can we do that? Um, how many sheets of fucking pasta do we have? Let's see. That's one layer. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. We go seven layers. I think we could do that. I like that. Seven layers like this is going to work very nicely. And eight, nine layers if we actually need to with that extra other weird pasta that I bought. Yeah, I'm snacking on some Parmesan run. So, if we have seven more layers, that means we have eight layers total. So, we're going to do... That's layer one. I think when we get to layer three or four, we'll do a full layer of just ricotta cheese in the, right in the middle. I like that idea. Again, it might suck. It might not work out. It might completely structurally ruin the lasagna. But you know what? This is the, this is the fun. So, another layer of noodles here. Pasta sheets, lay it down. I'm gonna go with just a little bit of red sauce on this, just cause we didn't do any on the last layer, just a little. Just to grease it up. Not a lot, just a wee bit. We didn't forget, the beef is still going on the, the beef is still going on the, um, on the board over there. Let's not forget, so this is, you know, Maybe this isn't as exciting as it was before, but this is exciting. You gotta watch me do fucking eight layers of lasagna. So I'm here right next to the computer. I'm taking your questions. I'm answering your fucking questions. Once my martini's out, we're gonna start drinking something else. It's gonna be fantastic. I just ate a massive hunk of, um... Not too much. That was too much Parmesan rind. Something that probably doesn't get said much. All right, so now we got to be a little conservative with my ragu here. Because we don't have so much ragu. So we did three on the first one. Let's just do two, two, one, two on this guy. Let's keep it light. As long as I'm envisioning, you know, cutting three slices of this or whatever. Three layers. As long as there's a little bit all throughout. You know, the, the layers are the key here. Doesn't have to be like a fucking burger every goddamn layer. Just a little bit. Like, that looks good for this layer. What we're probably needing and missing here... Some, some mozzarella cheese. So we did the bechamel. Let's do a little bit of mozzarella on this one. And then the next one we'll do the... Yeah, we'll do the mozzarella. It's labor intensive. And then where's the, uh, where's that bechamel? Bechamel, mozzarella, all the cheeses. American as fuck. Napolitana! And now another layer right on top. Boom. This is some epic ass lasagna. Uh, my only hope is that it structurally stays together. I, I think it will. The other key is also, you know, pushing it down, making sure it's flat as we go. This is the what? Second or third layer? Anyone? Class? Are we listening? Oh, no, we ripped it. Oh, God. All right, so we'll put the rip on the... It's all right. Everything's fine. It's just pasta. Okay. So yeah, we want to press it down. We want to press this shit down, you know, nice and even. That red sauce though is really bomb. Very simple. Marinara. And my, my urge, my tendency is to fill these layers with so much meat. Like the first layer, but I, I don't want to do that. I, I'm trying to refrain from doing that because it's really unnecessary. 
It only needs a little bit. We're gonna go with two scoops per layer. Like, just enough, because you're getting, you know, you don't need these huge fucking layers. Oh, that, that fat chunk over there? Where's it at? Peep that. I don't know if you can see it. It's giving off its fat really nicely. We're gonna cook in that. It's beautiful. It smells like beef in here. Ah, oh, yeah. So who, who's complaining about bacon fat before? Like, bacon's too fatty? Like, this is what you do with it. Like, that's how you use it. You use the bacon fat just like that. You render it down and you cook your breakfast in it, bro. What are you doing? If that's not what you're doing, I don't know what you're doing. You're just eating bacon after it's cooked in the fat and throwing it out? So help me God if I see you fucking throwing out bacon fat. You gotta go. All right, let's hit this with another Scoopy Scoops. That Parmigiano Pecorino Bechamelo. Again, I'm thinking of this as like three... Three cuts. That looks pretty good. And some more mozzarella. Not too much. Just enough to make it a little cheesy. My mom's lasagna would always be very, very cheesy and wet and soggy. I want it to be cheesy. This is low moisture mozzarella. This is not the fresh balls of mozzarella. Fresh balls of mozzarella have their place. This is not it, in my opinion. Um, oh, martini's out. Say it. Do we make another martini? I wish I could push the pole up. Do we make another martini, or do we just move to wine? We should probably pivot to wine. So that was three or four layers. I think we do the ricotta layer now. Um, yeah. I could hear the, the, the beef sizzling over there. Okay. We're almost done with the lasagna. It's like halfway done. So we're about halfway up. So again, this may be a critical mistake, but we're going to go with it. All right. We're going to do the straight layer of ricotta cheese. It's got the egg in it. Maybe it needs two eggs. Do I add another egg? What do we think? I only put one egg in this. And this is like... I don't know. That's pretty solid. I want it to firm up, though. I'm going to put the other egg in. When it cooks, I want it to be a firm layer of ricotta cheese. I don't want it to be a limp dick layer of ricotta cheese. So I'm going to go with two eggs. What the hell are we listening to? What is this shit? John Deere? We're not listening to that. That was terrible. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Let's, um, yeah, this is fine. Curtis Mayfield's always fine. All right, so I'm just going to incorporate this egg into the ricotta cheese. And hopefully this binds it together the way that I want it to be. It's definitely very yellow. It's looking nice. It's got a nice consistency. Okay. So... I want this to be a full layer of this. And you know what? Maybe I'll just add a handful of mozzarella cheese right in here just to firm it up. Just to make it a little bit, you know, more like a more like a glue. I don't know if you can see that. More like a glue when I when I lay it on here, because it's definitely a little creamy. A handful of parmesan ain't gonna hurt it either. So this is just gonna be an uber bo cheesy balmy layer. You know, that's important. And then all that ragu is going to go right on top. It's going to be very nice. All right, this is looking good. Okay. So I'm going to put, you know, a lot of this. So this is the one ricotta cheese layer that's going to be in here. You see a lot of uh, lasagna recipes, especially legit Italian ones, calling for no ricotta cheese. Well, my mother always used ricotta cheese. So this lasagna is going to have ricotta cheese. And this is how I'm going to do it. One big layer in the middle. So it makes a statement. You know, when you cut it, you'll see it. You'll know it's there. There's a little extra. I, I kind of don't want to go overboard. But fuck it. I guess, I guess that's what we're doing. Fuck it. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Let's just put it all in. 
the hell am I going to do with that? I just want to make sure it's even. Anyone have any questions about their holiday cooking? Let me know. But this ricotta layer is now complete. And I think that'll bring us to the steak. So let's, let's get going on the steak. And then we'll complete this. So let me do a minor little cleanup here. Oh, god damn, is that good. Wow! Because I don't want to just be cooking steak and have nothing to do with it. Right. So this beef is here. You see that? Let's get to it. We're getting to the steak. So before I get to the steak, let's do this. I do want it to be... I, I wanted to... Um, we're going to start cooking the steak right now. Okay? But before we cook the steak... I want to let everybody know about a new show that we're kicking off starting next year. Yes, this is a commercial. So this new show that we're starting in January, hopefully everyone who's here is listening. And then, fuck it. I'm going to run this commercial, and when we come back, we're going to cook steak. Here we go. joining i'm your host mr billy vegas or the hack chef depending on what show you're watching at the moment i want to tell you about a new program that i'm going to be hosting on rebel vision tv starting in 2021 you see 2020's got me missing a lot of things i miss going to new places and talking to new people and eating things that are specifically in that area and drinking things that are specifically from that town i haven't got to do it at all neither have you probably so what I want to do is I want to travel the planet virtually at my. No audio. Hold on. That can't be. God damn it. You know, I tried to make it so nice. Oh, all right. Let's fix it. I got it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining. I'm your host. Yes, or the hack chef, depending on what show you're watching at the moment. I want to tell you about a new program that I'm going to be hosting on Rebel Vision TV starting in 2021. You see, 2020's got me missing a lot of things. I miss going to new places and talking to new people and eating things that are specifically in that area, drinking things that are specifically from that town. I haven't got to do it at all. Neither of you, probably. So what I want to do is I want to travel the planet virtually at my desk safely by bringing in special foods and drinks that I can't get here, that I could taste and experience a little bit of culture outside of the quarantine. That's right. 2021, we're going to be starting bits and bites, all things consumable from all the places you want to be. We're going to be bringing in a special food and a special drink from a special area of our globe and talking to the people that make it and the people that consume it and what they think about it truly. Maybe we'll be cooking it. Maybe we'll not. Maybe we'll just be making drinks. Who can say? But more importantly, what better way to unroll a show like Bits and Bites than to celebrate America? That's right, America. In America, we love three things. We love eating, drinking, and bitching about everything. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to start Bits and Bites in 2021 in the biggest way possible. Once a week, we'll be covering a new state. 50 states in 50 weeks. That's right, 50 states in 50 weeks. We're going to be starting at the top in Alabama and then all the way at the bottom in Wyoming. Alphabetically, not... You know, technically north and south. Wyoming's not the south at all. We'll have a little geography lesson, I suppose, in the middle. We're going to be going to Ohio. We're going to be going to Oklahoma. We're going to be going to Kansas, North Krakalaki, South Dakota, Tennessee, and everything in between. I want to visit all of these states by getting the foods that are made there, the drinks that are made there, get them here, consume them, talk to you, and then talk to the people who make them and the people who consume them in those areas all about it. That's right. Bits and Bites 2021, 50 states in 50 weeks. Please join us for Bits and Bites on Rebel Vision TV. Focus, please. If you're here, a fine uh, Beaujolais uh, um, uh, Cuvée from, uh, I believe, Morgon. Um, Gamay, you know, full Gamay. Fucking really delicious. We're finishing that bottle up, and then we're going to move, hopefully, to some something nice and big. 
So this steak, again, is chilling right here. It ain't ready to go in yet. Once this is getting brown, and you can see it, like you can see, ho hopefully you can see, I really want you to see the brown butter. Like this is a huge, it's a simple process, but it's very important to, to get this. Is my music too loud or? We definitely need different music. Like, I don't know what these playlists are, but it's not what I'm feeling. Some Christmas music, I guess? Like, all right, fine. Like, that's fine. Anyway, so like, you don't want it to be smoking. You don't want it to be super raging hot. You just want to slowly, as long as there's bubbles happening slowly, you're in the good. Take your time. You're, if the better butter you get, the better it's gonna smell. It smells amazing in here right now because I have super high quality butter. And once that begins to brown, that means the milk, so the water has been evaporated. The milk solids are coming and cooking. Rye, nocino, and sweet vermouth. Yum. Get slathered, fam. Fuck yeah. Rye, nocino, and sweet vermouth. That's like a nice. Uh, I'm gonna call that a nutty Manhattan. That's a nut Manhattan there, brother. I appreciate that. See, I usually, I like to start my meals. Here's, <laughs> here's a little bit about me. I like to have a martini, move into wine with my dinner. And then once dinner's over, then it's time, then it's rise. Then we're talking Manhattans, then we're talking all that. I don't like sweet stuff. It's not my scene. But this um, bougie is delicious. So while that butter cooks off, it's all, it's getting there. Yeah, I, hopefully you can see that the color is getting there. Hopefully the light isn't that, but, that bad. We have the ricotta layer. The ricotta layer is going. So we're gonna add the next layer of pasta and we're gonna bang out this lasagna so I can put it away and be fucking done with it and focus on the steak and then just talk steak. Because your boy loves some steak. So I'm gonna keep that as just a pure cheese layer. No bechamel, although I, I probably should have used it, but maybe we'll just go heavy bechamel this layer. All right, another layer here. Looking good. Let's just do a light, uh, let's not. Cause th that cheese is gonna give off a lot of water. So let's not do the watery tomato sauce. Let's go with the beef. Let's go, not the beef, the, the ragu. Let's go with the ragu bolognese. Nocino's delicious. Uh, I'm taking music requests. I don't know why. I mean, I don't want to listen to Christmas music, but I didn't want to listen to what we were listening to either. Although that's good music. It's just not the vibe I'm looking for right now. I'm taking music requests. Can we get B in here? Where's Bumblebee Humble? Can he be in here and fucking mix it up? That'd be great. That's the kind of energy we need right now. Not this Christmas shit. Um, what was I listening to? I know. I know. What I'm doing. This is too low energy. This is like putting me to sleep. My dog is scratching at the door to come in. Just give me this. Just, just hit that. There we go. Next time I will have the boner jams up. That's a great idea. I'll just put this on for now. This is what I was listening to before, so this will work. All right, so we're getting there. We're almost there on the butter. You'll hear it crackling. You'll see the the milk solids solidifying. Like you're gonna see that happen, and then we're gonna go in with that with the um, with the boof. This bechamel should probably be hot, but I don't know. It's all right. I'd rather it cold because then it's going to chill out a little bit easier in the fridge. So let's hit it with another nice fat layer of bechamel. And maybe no mozzarella on this layer because we got the ricotta cheese right under this layer. We don't want it to be like over the top cheese, cheese ball world. Let's kind of give it a little spready. I know lasagna is not that exciting, but I had to do it and it kind of... The fact that I had to make the lasagna made me want to make the steak so I could show you guys. Because I see so many people. I got like three people on Instagram I know are making big roasts. Hopefully they're here. Before my garlic thing, I have a, a thing on the wall full of garlic and it fell and there's fucking garlic everywhere. But it's fine. It's just garlic. Comes Garlic comes in its own natural casing. So it's completely fine. So I have... Two, three, four, four after this, three after this, three. So we'll start using the other one. We're almost at the top. We're almost done. Oh, roasted garlic is the move, bro. Yeah, roasted garlic is the shit. 
All right, so now we'll hit this with a little bit of the red. So again, I want to have red, excess red sauce when I'm done. So that's why I made a bunch of red sauce, because I'm going to finish the lasagna with just straight red sauce, not meat sauce. Like, I don't want my lasagna to be finished with meat sauce. I want meat to be in the lasagna. Does that make sense? Am I being a, a cunt about how I like my lasagna? I mean, this is just how I like it. Right, we're going to do a nice meat layer here. And anything that's left over that doesn't make it into the lasagna, usually I'd make another small lasagna on the side, but I'm just going to mix it. I'm just going to save it, and I'll just make a pasta out of it later. Make a little cannelloni or something. So this would be a nice fatty, nice, nice hearty meat layer here. Okay. We're probably going to get right through this. This is looking good. This is a, this is a badass fucking lasagna right now. All right, let's hit it with the two sheets. Oh, bechamel! And then mozzarella. Roasted garlic is the big move. A lot of the... I did these cooking shows all pandemic, and I think... I feel like one of them is, at least on my Hack Chef Instagram blog thing, whatever you call it. I, I go in, in depth about how important it is to have roasted garlic in your in your fridge ready to go. Like, you need to, like, make roasted garlic. You could just confit garlic. Oh, yeah, this fucking butter is fucking ripe right now, baby. All right, we'll get back to the garlic. Let's get to the butter, because the butter waits for no men. All right, look at this bad boy. Can you see? I, I know it looks, like, very oversaturated. Like, if I put it over here, does this make it better? Like, can you see what I'm talking about with this butter? Do you see how the milk solids are over here? Do you see all this brown, these like brown chunks? And then the color of the butter itself is like, is like browning, it's like golden. Do you see that? I know the lighting's not the best, but can you see how the foam is right there on top? That's what you want. Like you can let this go for another minute or two, but like that, now we're ready to fucking party, okay? That means our butter is cooked out. It's just about to start smoking. It's not smoking. It's giving off um, the, the last of the water that, that exists in there. So now it's time to fucking party. Now we get this bad boy steak. We get this steak, and we try not to fuck up the lasagna that we have here. And you get your, you get your salt. All right, You get your kosher salt. Ideally, you have some nice coarse-ass sea salt. Uh, I have some Pacific Blue... Flake sea salt is very similar in texture to, um, to, um, very similar texture to, uh, to kosher salt. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know how good that camera is there, but it look it's, it's, it's very similar, but sea salt. All right. So I, I like sea salt. I think it's got some, some health benefits. Uh, you know, I'm a fan, but kosher salt's fine. Just don't use normal, normal bitch salt, table salt. Use good salt. So, and you want to aggressively season your steak. I mean, I mean, I mean, can I do it right here? Oh yeah, I can do it like, oh, I can just move the lasagna. This is, this is a good workflow. So you, I'm going to move the lasagna because I know I'm a clumsy fuck and I'll drop it. So. What you want to do with the steak is you want to aggressively season it. So now's the time to get your rack out of there. Now, we're, now we want to fuck this thing up, all right? We want to salt the fuck out of this. My butter is getting hot. I see it's smoking. I'm going to pull it off. This thing has no salt. I have not salted this. Let's assume this sat in the fridge for two, three days. You could touch it. It's very dry. If you want to go in there and you feel like it's got a little wetness, hit it with the paper towel. Make it as dry as possible all around, okay? You want a dry-ass steak. Dry equals crust, and crust equals flavor, okay? So there we go. Steak is dry. It's in this pan, ready to go. And now you want to aggressively salt the steak. This is the other key. The first key is getting the brown butter, and then the second key is aggressively salting the steak. Oh, wow, that looks like a lot of salt. It's not. Make it look like it's fucking snowing Christmas death on the steak. You almost don't want to see it. All right, and then rub it in, and trust me, the steak will take care of it for you. The steak will tell you what it wants. It'll eat it. It'll be like, oh, yeah, that's fucking good. That's a good steak. See? And look, it just it looked like it was covered in snow, and now it's ready to go. 
And you, this side is, is aggressively covered in salt. Now when you turn it, it's going to lose a lot of that, which is fine. Shake the container, the plate you got it on. Give the bottom a rub and then start turning it and pushing it. You want every facet of this steak to be covered in salt. Because we're not going to salt the other things that we're eating with the steak. I got a potato in the oven. I'm not going to salt the potato. I want the steak to be the, the, the salt component. You know, I'm going to make a little bit of a salad. Maybe it'll have some cheese in it, but I don't need to salt that because my steak is going to be so fucking salty. And again, this applies if this is a huge roast. This thing could be two, three times the size. The same, you know, this thing could be this fucking big. What we're about to do, you can do with this. All right. So mine will be done quicker. Yours will take longer, but the, the method's the same. Make the brown butter. Maybe you need more butter. Maybe you need a bigger pan. Okay. But the, the process is the same. Salt the shit out of it. Even the fat side that we cut up a little bit, make sure the fat's got salt because we're going to base the shit out of this and we want every little piece to be seasoned. Push it in there because it's going to lose a lot. You know, the thing you're, you're you know, you're not going to necessarily consume all this. It's going to lose a lot of the salt in the butter. So you want to push it in, get it in there. That's a lot of salt. That's looking good. Now, pepper is up for debate. You don't have to pepper it. I'm going to. I like the taste of burnt pepper. Cooking the steak in the butter, it's going to it's gonna take a minute. It's going to take a while. It's going to burn the pepper. I enjoy the flavor of the burnt pepper. I like that. So I'm going to go with it. So I'm going to add, I'm going to adjust my grinder so it's coarse. I'm going to put some coarse-ass pepper right on top. Not as much as the salt, but just some pepper. I'm going to push that shit in. Other side, same thing. And the pepper is going to add to the crust. All right, then I'm going to tighten it up a little bit, go a little finer. I like the pepper, the burnt pepper vibe on my steak. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of that. If you are not, just go with the salt. You don't need pepper. You can finish it with pepper. You know, you don't need to do what I'm doing. You do you. But that's nice. I can smell the pepper. We're in a good fucking spot right now. So let's get this. 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 I pulled the. I pulled the. Um, I pulled the, uh, the the pan of butter right off the burner just because it started to smoke again a little bit. So let's get back to that. Let's just bring it right back up the temp. It's not gonna take long because it's hot. And I'm gonna crank it up. So I had it on a low, let's say. You know, you know your oven. Stick with your oven, do what your oven does. I gotta check on my potato here. Oh, my potato's looking real nice. So I'm just gonna lower this. Keep that shit warm at two. All right, so you know your, you know your 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 burners. You know which burner is hot for you and which one's weak. You know, so use your burner that you know the most. Heat control is the is the name of the game with the steak. Okay, once we drop this steak in, we gotta babysit it. It's important. If the pan starts like boiling and going crazy and getting too hot, we gotta pull the pan off the fire. We gotta lower the fire. We gotta ride the snake, baby. Ride the fucking snake. So I'm going to bring this back up. And again, hopefully you can see, this is a good shot. You can see how it's, you see all these brown bits that are in here. We've done nothing but cook butter so far. And this pan looks like it's seen fucking World War II. Look at all that goddamn brown shit that's in there. That's what I'm talking about. All right? You're not going to get that with ghee. You can use ghee, but then you're going to have a ghee cooked steak. You want those brown butter. You want that, those cooked enzymes or whatever the fuck it is. I'm not a scientist. I'm just telling you it works. I've tried it with ghee. I've tried it with coconut oil. I've tried it with all the things. Butter's delicious and it's goddamn good. So is Childish Gambino. All right, so I'm just going to bring... Oh, it's smoking again. All right, so the pan's smoking right now. So we're going in. All right, we're going to go in hot. Here we go. All right, we're going to take the steak. We're going to take it. Push, push. And now the pan's smoking. As soon as we put it in, it's going to cool it down. And now push it down. Push the steak down right into the butter, so full contact, all right? Full contact with the pan, all around, and then back the fuck up. That's it. Now you, now you just wait. Now you make a lasagna or something on the side. So this is the kind of action you want to see. You see those bubbles? Can you see them? You can. This is a good shot. I'm very pleased with this. Do you see how that's bubbling right there? That's exactly what you want. You don't, and, and we're not generating smoke and steam. The pan is catching up. And right now, 
The steak is bonding with the butter and the pan and the heat is carrying through into the steak. Have a thermometer at the ready if you want to make sure, you know, as we continue to cook. And have a big ass spoon ready to baste. I don't have a good basting spoon, but I have this like serving spoon, so I'm just gonna use this one, it's on the top. Uh, and then also, you know, herbs. If you wanna finish it, when that time comes, have garlic, thyme, uh, rosemary, sage, whatever you got ready, have that at the ready. Now, you can see this steak is chilling right now. It's almost a little bit too much. I'm gonna lower it a little bit and let that go. We don't gotta think about that. I'm gonna get back to my lasagna. I ain't got time to think about that steak because that steak is gonna be hanging out right now. So let's get back to work. Let's let's finish this fucking lasagna up. We did this. Let's get a little moots on here while that steak goes. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully people are, are, are vibing on the steak. All right, this should be the last layer. I mean, we, we're hitting the top of this fucking pan here. I got, I got one more sheet of pasta. I don't know what to do with it, but it should be the last. So again, that steak, you just let it go. You don't even touch it. Wish you could smell. Yeah, well, I mean, it smells like butter and beef. And, I mean, it smells fucking fantastic. I'm not going to lie. Oh, sorry. It smells fantastic. I'm not going to lie. I'm glad you said that. Cheers to you. But hopefully you're, I don't know, learning something. So I got one rogue sheet left for this lasagna. I don't know where I want to go with that. And I got a bunch of these little baby bitch seat sheets. Like, I don't even want to use these. This is, like, dumb. These sheets are stupid. They're really hard, too. So, like, I'm just going to wrap them. I don't want to use these weird store brand sheets. So, I'm going to put away the other stupid sheets that I bought, because they seem dumb. Now, the other thing with the steak is, let's get to the steak and let's just talk about it. The steak is gonna go, all right? It's gonna take its time. Now, I don't wanna fuck with it too much, but like, you can see on the side, hopefully this, you can't see shit, I'm not gonna do it. But as you watch the side and you observe, you can see the gray creep up. You can see the heat going through the steak. You wanna keep your eye on that, okay? You know how big your steak is, when you start seeing the gray creep up, like, uh, almost halfway through, motherfucker's cooking halfway through. I mean, the steak is telling you what's up. You don't have to pay that much, you know, you, you don't have to be a, a rocket scientist to, to, to not fuck up your steak. The steak's talking to you, baby. Don't worry. All right, so this layer, um, this should be the top layer, I guess. Like, we don't need another layer. That seems excessive. So let's just, um, this also may be the bottom layer, though. Yeah, can't have any bonus around is what I'm thinking. Oh, no, not the commercial again. Uh, I, I think we're going to layer this top layer. This may be the bottom, though. I may flip it out depending on how well it sticks together. Let's just, let's just stick with, with what we're doing here. Let's do another meat layer. Or no, we don't want to top it with that. Let's say this is the top. Cheese, right? Cheese and sauce. Cheese and red sauce. Bechamel. We'll finish the bechamel. There's not that much. We'll hit it with the cheese. Yeah, that's the move. All the bechamel. There's not that much left. So this is a Parmesan Pecorino bechamel. And then we'll top this with mozzarella. Low moisture. Deli mozzarella, not you know, not the not the wet ass balls. Oh, that's good. Oh, damn, that's good. 
And now I, I think we just hit this with the chi. We got a nice big ass layer of cheese. Fuck it. Just put all the fucking cheese on there. Let's fuck the lasagna. And then, you know, we'll wrap this in like foil, in like plastic wrap and foil so it bakes when we cook it. I'm not even going to put any red sauce on top. I'm going to, I want to like finish it with red sauce on the top, but that's going to make it sloppy to cut. I'm going to leave it like this right now. This is looking nice. So we got these weird sheets left. We'll use those later. Steak is going, doing its thing. All right. So let's get this red sauce out of here. We'll, we'll pack this red sauce up later. Red sauce can hang out on the stove. The ragu we could put away. How much do we think this lasagna weighs? Uh, we'll do a contest right now. I don't know what I'm going to give away, but let's, let's do something. What do we think about this fucking lasagna? What do you think this thing weighs? Look how big that fucking thing is. Tree fitty? I got a scale over here. I can legit weigh it. I'm going to weigh it. Taking, taking guesses. Oh, I don't know what the pan weighs, so... Scratch that. If I knew what the pan weighed, I could do it, but... I don't want to cheat anybody. I have some time that looks like it's going bad. Maybe we could find some good time in here. There we go, some good time. That's a good time. Maybe some sage. Tis the season. The sage looks like shit. That looks good enough. All right, we'll just use that and the garlic. That'll be fantastic. So we're just gonna add that to flavor the butter, right? So let's recap. The steak is going. I know no one cares about the lasagna. I do, I had to do it. Sorry for the time sink, but fuck it. I had to make lasagna. Hopefully you learned something. Um, this is the shit we're going to add to the uh, butter as we, to the steak as we baste it. Okay, we got some rosemary, some fresh thyme, uh, some garlic cloves that are just whole. Just going to smash them. All right, with the, with the peel and everything, it's fine. And then we're just going to dump that in, and that's going to instantly flavor all of the um, butter that we're going to baste the steak in. Okay, does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions in class? Questions, anyone? Anyone have any questions? No? All right, so let's take a look at the steak. Let, let's, like, let's get a little analytical on the steak here. The bubbles... The bubbles on the steak are the same. And you can turn the pan just to make sure it's all going. But if you can see, I'm trying to look, you can see the gray is creeping up the, the side, okay? Now the time has come to flip this bad motherfucker, okay? So this is gonna be a beautiful crust, but it's not even gonna be a complete crust, okay? This is gonna be a nice looking crust, but not complete. So let's shake that around, turn that. Look at that. All right, we haven't even touched it yet, okay? That's a money shot, baby. And now look at the side also, all right? Let, let's see, just for a temp check, we just did the first flip. I don't even know how long it was cooking. Let's just go right in the middle of that piece. You're at 75 degrees, 73, 68, like right in the center of that, okay? So now, this first side to me is almost where we want it to be. Yes, it's time to fucking slather, Glammy, Glimmy, G-Jammy. You right. We're going to slather the fuck out of this thing. But first, one must celebrate and toast to the boogie. Cheers, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you for being here. Hopefully you're learning something or at least enjoying it. If you're getting one of those things, I think we're doing well. So cheers. And uh, it's probably a good time to go to a commercial break real quick, and then we'll come back and finish the steak. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining. I'm your host, Mr. Billy Vegas, or the Hack Chef, depending on what show you're watching at the moment. I want to tell you about a new program that I'm going to be hosting on Rebel Vision TV starting in 2021. You see, 2020's got me missing a lot of things. I miss going to new places and talking to new people and eating things that are specifically in that area, drinking things that are specifically from that town. I haven't got to do it at all. Neither of you, probably. So what I want to do is I want to travel the planet virtually at my desk safely by bringing in special foods and drinks that I can't get here, that I could taste and experience a little bit of culture outside of the quarantine. That's right. 2021, we're going to be starting Bits and Bites, all things consumable from all the places you want to be. We're going to be bringing in a special food and a special drink from a special area of our globe and talking to the people that make it and the people that consume it and what they think about it truly. Maybe we'll be cooking it. Maybe we'll not. Maybe we'll just be making drinks. Who can say? But more importantly, what better way to unroll a show like Bits and Bites than to celebrate America? That's right, America. In America, we love three things. We love eating, drinking, and bitching about everything. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to start Bits and Bites in 2021 in the biggest way possible. Once a week, we'll be covering a new state. 50 states in 50 weeks. That's right, 50 states in 50 weeks. We're going to be starting at the top in Alabama and then in all the way at the bottom in Wyoming. Alphabetically, not you know, technically north and south. Wyoming's not the south at all. We'll have a little geography lesson, I suppose, in the middle. We're going to be going to Ohio. We're going to be going to Oklahoma. We're going to be going to Kansas, North Krakalaki, South Dakota, Tennessee, and everything in between. I want to visit all of these states by getting the foods that are made there, the drinks that are made there, get them here, consume them, talk to you, and then talk to the people who make them and the people who consume them in those areas all about it. That's right. Bits and Bites 2021, 50 states in 50 weeks. Please join us for Bits and Bites on Rebel Vision TV. I pulled out some Latacino kale, some dinosaur kale. All right, I'm just going to get all of these fucking these together. I'm going to use it again. Sorry, sorry. My bad. I wish the music wasn't so ludicrous all the time, but it's always it's back and forth. So uh, now that that side's going, I'm going to add the aromatics to the pan. All right, we got the garlic, the sage, the thyme. It's going to start to pop. It's going to snap, crackle, pop. Listen. Right? That's not a bad thing. That means it's giving up all of its goodness. That's what you want. Oh, the smell! Oh, the smell! Oh! That's a smell, baby. That's a vibe. That's a fucking vibe right now. The garlic, the sage, the thyme, the rosemary. So whatever is in your fridge, you gotta use. All right. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna push all that to the other side. All right. Now let's peep let's peep that that fat side. Looks like it did a little bit of work. We gotta take care of this gray side, the side that was not cooked first. Now look at it, man. That's gray. What are we gonna do about that? I'll tell you what we're gonna do about that. We're gonna baste the bitch. And it's gonna be beautiful. So here we go. This is where you put that heat up. You get this butter nice and hot. And you're, you're adding the fat. You're moving the fat to the steak. You're creating the crust. So I'm just gonna let the pan heat up a little bit. I got a little bit hotter now. And now, you know, we only need one side to really have crust, but in reality, you want both sides. There's no reason that you can't have that. So you crank that heat up. And if you got a gray side, you know, the side needs a little bit of crust. This is exactly what you do just to get that crust up. And trust me, that crust is going to come. Because you let that one side cook, and that develops the crust with the pan. The pan is doing all the work of the heat. Now it's on you to butter base the other side that's gray-ish in nature compared to the other side to gain that crust. So you want to crank that heat and just baste it, baby. Yeah, oh man, your fingers are gonna hurt. Wow, it's like stove pot. You goddamn right it is. 
You got him right. It takes a minute. If you could smell this, the garlic, the sage, the rosemary. Every time you lather this steak with some butter and you see all those bubbles popping out, that's what you want, baby. That's what's up. All right, so you keep hitting it. You just keep hitting it. Like fucking A-Rod back in the day, you just keep hitting it. It don't matter. You just keep doing work. And once you're done with that, you give it a flick and make sure the other side's okay. And you go, wow, that other side's looking real good. But I give out a little love too, just cause, you know, that seems like the right thing to do. This side looks like it wants some love too. You got some chili peppers in your oven, in your fridge? You can put them right in the butter. You wanna make it a spicy boy steak? Ain't no shame in that. We're butter basted, baby. All right, we're gonna do another clip. This side is gorgeous. So we're gonna do a quick temp check to make sure we're not overcooking this bad boy. And we are definitely not. We're on with 104 on the pour. Again, for me, I'd probably pull it right now, but I'm gonna to try to make this as look as pretty as possible. And it's gonna be delicious either way. We're no way, in no way are we gonna overcook this to like a, a bad zone where it's inedible. This butter is full of delicious, this butter is not just butter, it's beef fat from the own ribeye, let's not forget, okay? It's garlic, it's rosemary, it's thyme, it's sage, it's whatever the fuck you got in the fridge you gotta use. Look at all that bubbly action. Look at that. Hot damn! Woo! Holiday roast! Now again, this method is better for bigger steaks. If you've got a double the size steak, this is even better because it's less hands-on time. And you don't got to worry about overcooking it nearly as much. I'm only worried about it because it's relatively thin in the capacity of the heat that we're cooking it in. You got a big boy steak, you got to really, you got to do a lot of work to fuck that up. Oh yeah, you can see how hot this butter is now. You just keep going. You just keep butter basting. And you tell all your guests at the holiday party, you go, yo, come around. You go, come here, get your drink. You go like this. Cheers, everybody. Happy holidays. St. Nick's here, baby. Here comes St. Nick. And you pull back that butter. And you just do this action. And you and your, your kitchen fills with this beautiful beef fat, butter, garlic. Can you see that steak, what it's doing? It's dancing, baby. Woo! Holy shit. So we're just basing the shit out of that side. Let's just go with a quick flip. Let's give the other side a little bit of love. And then let's pull this bad boy. Holy hell. Holy hell. I mean, even if we overcook this steak, I'm not, I don't even care at this point. Nope. So this is gonna be what they call a perfect medium rare. You want a pan, you want another pan like this with a rack. Because you don't want it to cook in its own juice. Alright, so make sure to give the, the, the other edge that hasn't seen the pan yet a final sear. All right. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna hit it with that butter. Flip it. I'm gonna hit it with all of that. All right. Look at that bad motherfucker. Come on. Come on! Get your fucking life right. Look at that. Look at that bad boy. Woo! So now you just want this to rest, all right? You put it aside and you let it rest. Five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you're feeling. I see some action here. Turn the music down, we did that, slather. So dumb question, why doesn't the crust get created on the second side? So, <clears throat> think about the amount of time that we had. Um, that's a good question, it's not dumb. Think about the amount of time that we had the uh, pan. So we took the pan and put it on the fire with the butter, right? And then we took our time making the butter become this beautiful brown butter. As soon as we salted and seasoned the steak and applied it, we pressed down on the steak. 
the majority of the cooking time was on one side of that steak, of that roast, okay? By the time we flipped it, there was no need to baste it yet because that side has a lot of the crust. That A lot of the action is going to be on the first side that you put down, without a doubt, all right? You want to keep an eye on the temperature because you don't want to overcook it. You could continually flip it and, uh, and baste it and get an equal crust all around, but you'll see once this is done resting... It's pretty even the way that I do it. There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's, like they say. You can put it on there for three minutes when we first put it, and then flip it and do three minutes aside, hit the timer every three minutes, flip it, and have a beautifully even crust all around. I prefer a harder crust on one side, and then a butter-based crust on the other side, you know, as much as you can, because that's just going to be delicious either way. The whole thing is being cooked in butter, steamed in butter, finished in butter, and the herbs, like, you, you just... The flavor is going to be all around. If you're just hunting for crust, if you're just going for crust trophies, which you can, you would want to dry it out and and do, you know, X amount of time per side and continually baste it every time you flip it. And you could do that. You could literally flip it every minute and baste, baste, baste for a minute, flip, baste, baste, baste for a minute till it's done. But if you have a steak this size, you know... You could do that and get away with it within 15, 20 minutes. A steak that's like a big ass roast, you're not gonna do that. You know, it's just, it's just too, it's gonna be, it's gonna take you too long. So you let it go and you let that crust form on one side. If it was a bigger steak, even I would take the fat cap side and maybe even cook that side down first. Remember when we cooked um, this sad little piece of beef to to render off the beef fat? That whole beef cap of the big roast that you have is that. So if you start cooking at a lower temperature with that down and let all that fat come out, you could pull the roast off, add the butter, melt the butter to brown butter stage, and then go with, you know, side one of your of your roast and then flip, flip, flip. I'm going to let that, I mean, I'd dig into that right now, but you could let it rest up to 15, 20 minutes if you really want. But I'm going to finish this um, arugula salad. And taste it. Once it's ready, I'm going to pull out the potato and show you what I got with that. And I'm going to show you how I eat my steak. And I'm going to probably kill the stream and enjoy my my dinner. All right. So this kale's been chilling out, like we said, for, uh, for a little bit. Just with the lemon. No salt, no nothing. Let's remember the... Um, our uh, our steak is super seasoned, all right? Like, you, the other thing you want to do is you want to think about your entire meal. You don't want to salt, I mean, you want to salt everything, I guess, but you don't want to, like, over-salt your meal. Like, think about salt in the context of your meal. My steak is heavily salted and peppered and seasoned. When I bite into that steak, that crust is going to be hitting me hard with salt. My potato which I didn't even talk about yet, but I'm going to pull out, is literally a potato that I put in the oven at 325 and just let it go. I did nothing to it. This salad, I want to be the acid balancer. I need a little brightness on the plate. So I'm, I hit this with the lemon juice, and I'm going to hit it with a nice olive oil as well. And and maybe a little bit of, of Parmigiano, just because I have it here from the lasagna. And that could be the salt component of the salad instead of actual salt. So I have the kale in here. Usually I just do an arugula salad because I like the combination of arugula and, um, ow, what the fuck, and steak. But I'm just going to throw like halfy half arugula and kale. Just because you want, you want crunch, you want texture, you know, and this is going to be the acidity carrier. This is going to have the lemon in it for me. I like that. I like squeezing lemon on my fatty ass steak, especially a ribeye. Ribeye's not even my favorite cut, but that's what we're eating tonight. That's a super fatty piece of meat. So, you know, I like it to be, um, I like a strip steak. I like a little leaner piece. I like grass fed beef. You know, it's a little bit on the leaner side. Don't get me wrong, I like beef fat, but I, I like a leaner cut steak, generally speaking. That's not to say I don't like a fatty steak. Don't get me wrong, I'm just telling you what I prefer. Because this is good. It needs a little bit more lemon. I'm going to hit it with the lemon at the end. It's got some lemon. It's just going to wilt it. Um, 
I want to try this new olive oil I got. The other key, the other thing, so if there's three takeaways I want you to have from this. One, use good butter to cook your steak in. Don't use shit butter. Spend the money and get the good butter. Two, uh, you know, get as best beef as you can. And three, get good olive oil to finish it with. It makes a big, big difference. Wow, that's peppery and delicious. I'm going to finish the steak with that one. Wow, that's real peppery. I don't I just found this at some fucking Italian market by me. This is one I bought in Whole Foods. If you can find this, this is fucking unbelievable stuff. This thing's maybe 20 bucks and you may go, ah, why would I buy that? Trust me. You don't use a lot of it. You don't cook with it. You just finish things with it and like dress a salad with it. It's got so much goddamn flavor. It's so good. That Frankie's 457 or whatever the fuck it's called. It's unbelievable. So this little kale arugula salad vibe. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of that extra Parmigiano Reggiano that I had left over from the, um, left over from the, uh, water. It's good. Left over from the lasagna. Thank you for that song, Marvin. So this salad's ready to go here. This is just, you know, pecorino, oh no, Parmigiano, kale, arugula, and lemon. We're going to hit it with this lemon right before it's ready to go. And, um... Uh, I think it's time to cut that steak and eat it. Um, let me bust out my side dish here. So this is a russet potato that literally I just put. This is a russet potato that I literally just put in the oven at 325 for about two hours. It's, it's very crispy on the outside. If you could hear it, I don't know if you can. But it's very crispy on the outside. It's going to be super steamy and nice inside. I'll chop half of that down. I'll show you how I make a plate. I'll show you my plate. And then I threw these in the oven, I don't know, what, about a half hour ago? I had a couple Fresno chilies. I like heat. Whoa! I like jalapenos or I like heat. I have some extra Fresnos. So I threw those in. So the temp for the meat depends on how you like it. Temp is up to you. Um, I like mine on the rare to medium rare side. So I pull mine out like when the center of the center is like nearing. Once it's over 100 to me, I'm ready to like pull. I'm like aggressively buttering, aggressively getting it ready to get out. And I don't want to have it on there over 110, 115. That's me. That's what I did with this. And I'll show you where this is at. And then you tell me if that's what you like. If you like it a little bit more. Go till you poke around 115. I go by feel, but the thermometer is very helpful. Thermometer is a good thing. So uh, we got these Fresno chilies. I like to just have these on the side of my steak just so oh, I want a little heat. I like that. The potato, I'm just going to slice right in half. Put a big old half on my plate. We're just going to make a plate. I'll show you how I make my plate. So... Uh, cutting the steak is an important thing. So this is a rib roast. So let's assume you have this rib roast that's maybe double the size of this. Okay, let's get this fucking... Salads are great now, but let's get that out of here. Let's assume you have something that's like, uh, you know, du double the size of this or whatever. The cutting is going to be the same. Um, so we're going to knock off all the beautiful aromatics and garlic... Okay. Again, if they stay on there, we eat them. I'm fine with that. But just for the sake of presentation and talking about it, it's easier to get it out of the way. All right. So, um, you know, if you, depending on how you want to serve this, if you have a big platter, you don't want to do what I'm about to do. But if you do not have a large platter, I would suggest finishing. If you're going to cut it right here, something that I like to do is put salt down on the board. So the bottom side that I put down eats up some more salt. Because again, we lost a lot of salt with this, but you want everything to be salted, even some pepper if you got it. But a little bit of salt down here ain't going to hurt. If you have a board you're going to cut it on, forget it, you're going to scoop the juice anyway. If you got like one of these, a scraper, it's good. And I'm not salt, I like salt, but I'm not a salt fiend. Just salt's very important with beef. You want your beef to be super salty. Not super salty, you want to be properly salted. All right, so let's get this out of here. So again, let's look at both sides. We go look at side A, we can see that we have a very beautiful crust here, right? Looking real nice. 
And then side B also has a beautiful crust. It's just less beautiful on the other side. It's still a beautiful crust. But we're gonna serve the crispy crust. Woo! Don't drop it. The crispy crust on the side up, okay? So now I'll show you how to carve this bitch. Assume it was twice the size, it's fine. So your bone is in it. So feel around. Let's get this out of here. Probably with cut leg over here. You can feel around in the roast, all right? You'll feel that the bone is like here. I know, the, I wish my lighting was a little better. But your bone is gonna like, it's, it's, it's like, it's like this. This is like the bone. It's like this shape. So the first thing I would do is grab the end of the bone. You can feel it and kind of put your knife in on it on an angle and cut into the bone as much as you can. Like keep the knife into the bone. If you start hitting other shit, cartilage, it's fine. And then just go with it and then boom, there's your bone. Now there's a lot of meat on this bone still, but the bulk of your bone is off, right? Of course, we're going to cut this off and eat all this. But right now for the sake of carving and presentation and making it look very pretty, the bone is off. Now, let's not forget, in the beginning, we talked about the deckle. So you're going to find that once the bone is off, opposite of the bone, there's this little piece of meat here that wants to come off. You'll see naturally the meat is separating from the fat is on it. So it's not going to take much for you to just grab it and kind of just push it even with your knife. You probably don't have to cut it and pull it apart. All right. This is the deckle. This is probably the best part of the ribeye right here. Okay. It's its own little steak. So you got the bone, you got the deckle, you got this little eye, depending on what cut you get, you got this little eye of steak, which is all beef and delicious steak. And then this is all steak here too. So this is the bone, and this is actually a separate muscle here also, but for the sake of discussion, we can call this one, this, this is the ribeye, this is the actual eye of the ribeye, this is the deckle, which actually connects to the shoulder, and then here's your bone, that's beautiful. So. You know, I exploded it out like this, but what I would actually do for, for, for carving purposes is kind of keep it like this. I'd keep the deckle separate and I'd keep the eye separate. Usually the eye doesn't come out like that, but, and I would take the bulk of the steak like this and then, you know, maybe on an angle, cut it, go straight down on an angle and maybe do slices that are the size of your fingernail, you know, like depends how many people you have. And then you want to do, you don't want to be, you want to do as, as minimal cuts as possible. You want to kind of like slice, you know, you want to like go right through and then go straight through. Like don't even, don't try to change the shape of the steak. Roll with the steak. And as you get here, it's fine. So then once you cut it, push it back together, right? And then stick the bone right back on there. Make like nothing happened. Take the eye, same thing. Now, if you got four people, maybe you want to be nice and cut the eye into four small pieces. You know, put the eye right back. And then the deckel, you could do the same thing. Say there, eye. The deckel, kind of go through. Just do aggressive, nice big cuts. You know, you don't got to get in there. And then, you know, keep it in its shape and push it right back. And now look, we have the steak as it was just right there. I would serve it on the board like this. If you're coming to my house, I'm cutting this potato, all right? This potato's gonna be here. I'm gonna lather that shit with sour cream. Got a little red pepper heat right there if you need it. And then you finish that kale salad with a nice handful of